God praise in the house because he made a way. Amen. We're so grateful of our praise team and our band for leading us this morning. Let's give them a hand for uh, just leading us to the in, in great worship. And uh, again, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. And uh, we're so grateful uh, for you and grateful for our pastor, uh, Pastor Orr, and this vision 2025. I hope y'all have just been, uh, just the Lord has been leading you on this vision to follow our pastor as we are looking to do more things for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And this morning, we're going to continue uh, in our series on everyday faith, looking at James chapter 5. We're in James chapter 5. And if you need the notes for Pastor Orr, you can, uh, most of you all already have it, but if you text uh, the number, I think they should have it on the screen, 31996, all of the notes uh, for this sermon, you can have that uh, on your devices, all your digital uh, media uh, platforms there. And uh, we're going to stand to our feet as we look at James chapter 5, James chapter 5. And as Pastor Orr would say, we've been slowly just walking through the book of James, line by line, just seeing what uh, the word of the, the Lord has to say for us in the book of James. James chapter 5, starting in verse 7, reads this way. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too uh, must be patient. Now take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door for examples of his patience in suffering. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. Uh, for instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. Uh, you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. Uh, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, uh, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no so that you will not sin and be condemned. That is God's word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I know y'all are looking at me saying, you're not Pastor Orr. You're not Pastor Orr. Well, Pastor Orr is on his way. Pastor Orr should be coming uh, any, any time soon. I know he is, is, is coming, and he said he's going to send me a text message when he was about to arrive in the building. And, and so uh, until he comes, y'all will be looking at me, and I'm going to be talking and, and, and keeping this thing going as we are looking. Uh, he's coming. Say, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming again. Jesus Christ is on his way back. We've already read it even in the devotion that scripture, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 uh, says that that day is going to come when the sky is cracked and Jesus Christ comes again and every eye will see him when he come again. And so here's our question for you this morning, brothers and sisters. The simple question is this right here. Are you ready? Are you ready for his return? Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for his return? Brothers and sisters, are you ready today for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because he's on his way back. That is what James was dealing with there. And I appreciate Jerome this morning. I said, Jerome, I'm going to need you this morning. But I appreciate Damon for reading that scripture. James reminded them that the Lord is on his way back. He came the first time, brothers and sisters, to save us, but he is coming the second time to judge us. He came the first time uh, to really redeem mankind from sin, but he is going to come the second time to remove sin from mankind. 
He came that first time as a suffering Savior, but he is coming again as the sovereign God. The first time he died on the cross, but when he comes that second time, he is going to sit on the throne. And the question for all of us this morning is simply this, are you ready? Are you ready for his return? I believe the next thing that is on God's uh, calendar for uh, the church in terms of end time prophecy is the rapture of the church. The Bible teaches us that one day uh, the church is going to be raptured up to meet the Lord in the air. That will usher in that seven years of great tribulation period, followed by at the end when Jesus with his saints will come back to this earth in what is known as the battle of Armageddon. It's not a battle at all, brothers and sisters, because what Revelation said, he will open his mouth and speak, and the sword of his mouth will slay all of his enemies. That would usher in that thousand years millennial reign, millennial reign, a reign, and then after that, that great white throne judgment, and then we will enter into eternity. And the question for all of us this morning is, are you ready for his return? Because if the Lord delays his coming, we might not live to see it. We might die even before that time. I've had all kinds of funerals I've had to preach uh, this year of old and young, of sick folks and well folks, of uh, folks that were unexpected, natural causes, and then at the hands of others. And so it behooves all of us to make sure we are ready for his return. That's what I want to share with you this morning, that since the Lord will come unexpectedly, be ready. Since the Lord will come unexpectedly, each one of us ought to be ready. The Bible said that he is coming back as a thief in the night, and it behooves all of us to be ready. So how can I be ready, preacher? How uh, can I be prepared? How can I make sure that even if the Lord calls me in death before his second coming, how can I be sure that I will go home to be with the Lord? I appreciate James in James chapter 5 because he gives us some great advice on how to get ready and stay ready. Here's my first point, y'all, and that is James teaches us we ought to be patient. We ought to be patient. I, I call this his time in verse 7 and 8. We, uh, Damon read it there. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. When you speak about uh, the Lord's time, and James said it requires patience on our part. James says, even then, the Lord coming is near. That was 2,000 years ago that James spoke that, and yet I remind each of us today that his coming is still near. How many know that a 1,000 years is just as a single day, the Bible says, in the eyes of the Lord, he, his coming is near. And yet James says we have to be patient. Well, how do, how do we be patient concerning his time in preacher? I love what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter uh, 24 and verse 36. Jesus says that, that when you think about his time, and his timing is unknown. His timing is unknown. Matthew 24, verse 36, uh, uh, Jesus said it this way. Um, However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself, only the Father knows his timing is un is unknown brothers and sisters the very first time somebody tell you that jesus is coming january the 5th 2019 don't believe them because his timing is unknown but not only is his timing unknown his timing is unexpected jesus goes on to say in matthew 24 uh, verse 37 when the son of man returns it would be like it was in noah's days in those days before the flood the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time noah entered his boat people didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away that is the way it will be when the son of man comes verse 44 you also must be ready all the time 
Y'all see that? Underline that in your Bible. You also must be ready all the time. Why? For the Son of Man will come when least expected. His timing is unexpected. His timing comes when we least looking for it. So oftentimes, folks get shocked and, and especially surprised when certain folks go home to be with the Lord. His timing is unknown. His timing is unexpected, but his timing is understandable. It is understandable because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 33, in the same way when you see all these things, you can know his return is very near right at the door. What, what Jesus is saying is this right here, brothers and sisters, when you see the signs, and the signs are all around us, earthquakes at, and in various places, wars and rumors of war, of the love of mankind growing a cold, of times when folks will a heap to themselves, teachers with itching ears, and they won't endure sound doctrine. All of those are just signs that the end is near. You see, we don't know the season, but we can tell the signs. And so we have to be like James said, we have to be patient like the farmer. You see, the farmer was patient, but yet he was productive. He, he was waiting, but yet he was working. The farmer knows that, that autumn rain is going to give me the opportunity to plant my crop. And then he knows that the spring rain is going to give me the opportunity to harvest my crop in. And so he patiently waits, but he is working all while he is waiting. That's what the Lord is saying to each one of us this morning, Brown. Work while you wait. Work while you wait. You, you, you see, some of us, some of us are waiting for the Lord, but we ain't doing nothing while we wait. We are sitting up, kind of twiddling my thumb. What you doing? I'm just waiting on Jesus to come back. I'm just waiting on Jesus. But no, the Bible doesn't tell us just to do nothing. There is work to be done. Jesus said in John chapter 9 uh, that you must work the work of him that sent you while it is day because night cometh when no man can work. I got some young folks in here this morning. Don't even wait till you get old. But Ecclesiastes says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Work while you wait brothers and sisters there are souls to be saved there is a world to win there is a gospel to get out uh, there is witnessing to do all of us got a job to do we got to be patient but we got to work while we wait not only be patient work while you wait here's the second thing that james is going to tell us if we're going to be prepared when the lord comes back he says be peaceful be peaceful, be, be peaceful. Look again what he says there, verse 9. Don't grumble about each other, or you will be judged, for look, the judge is standing at the door. I call this our togetherness, our togetherness. James reminds us that judgment is coming. Matter of fact, he says, the Lord is already at the door. How, how, how many were scared of their parents when you were growing up? I, I'm, I'm glad I ain't the only one. Uh, folks ain't scared anymore of their parents. Uh, they don't have any fear, but I tell you, we were scared. Matter, matter of fact, we, we were so scared until if we, if we, when Daddy showed up, if we thought we were doing something wrong, we got straight, quick, fast, and a hurry. Matter of fact, I grew up old school when you couldn't even be caught doing nothing. Uh, uh, and, and, and so we had the old gravel, old rocks on the, on the road, on the, on the yard out there. And when we heard the, a daddy's car uh, on those rocks, boy, we jumped up. We'd get a broom and go start sweeping or something because we wanted, we didn't want to, we, we didn't want daddy to catch us doing anything wrong and we sure enough didn't want him to catch us doing nothing. James said the Lord is on his way back. And if the Lord is on his way back, we ought to be living in such a way where God is pleased when we come back. And so James says we ought to straighten up. We ought to be mindful of ourselves, be careful and watchful, making sure that we're doing the right thing. Then James tells us what we ought to stop doing. And here's what I find interesting in verse 9 is what he doesn't tell us to stop doing. James doesn't say 
stop dancing. James doesn't say stop smoking. James doesn't say stop drinking, although some of y'all need to stop that. James doesn't even say stop going to Anita Baker concert on Friday nights. But look what he does say what we ought to stop doing. He says, don't what? Don't what? Don't grumble. Don't complain about each other. Uh, other translations say, don't hold grudges against one another. Uh, that, that the word there, uh, it, it really means, you know, how we get irritated and just frustrated with folks. And, and sometimes we get to the point where we act like, I don't know, I can't stand them. Y'all ever seen folks like that? I mean, I know y'all don't do it, but I, I know y'all never said it. But, but folks, folks ooh, they, they, they make my skin crawl. My, my, my blood just go to boiling and curl. I'm like, how can you get that hot that your blood start boiling on the inside? And yet James says that we ought not to grumble and complain against one another. Why? Because the judge is standing at the door. It's standing at the door. Con confession time, confession time. I, I almost hate to confess this, but, but I got suspended from school once. Ninth, ninth grade, ninth grade, some, somebody say, well, pa, you know, that happened before you were preaching. Oh, I was already preaching. I, 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 I started preaching when I was 11 years old, but, but I, I appreciate what mama would tell folks because folks would ask mama uh, back then. My folks would say, uh, how, how is that, that preaching boy? Mama would say, in the pulpit, he's a preacher, but outside, he's just a regular boy. And boy, I tell you, I was bad. And, and, and one, one day in school, one day in school, Spanish class, Spanish class, boy, we were cutting up so bad. I'm talking about just cutting up. But of course, I had to take it a little bit farther than everybody else. And finally, Miss Black Tice, I'll never forget her, her name. Uh, in, in her broken English, she said, you go to the office. I said, I ain't going nowhere unless you go with me. But little did I know the principal was standing at the door. And he leaned around the corner. Mr. Bush said, oh, no, Mr. Orr, she ain't going nowhere, but you're going to my office. Now, somebody um, asked the question last night. They said, what in the world happened to you after the suspension? Uh, I'll go ahead and, and just throw this in. This is just a side note. This is just a side note. But my, my daddy didn't whoop me after I started preaching. If I had known that, I would announce my calling at nine years of age. <laughs> that, that, daddy said, you're a preacher, you ought to know better. But I tell you, they worked the living daylights out of me in those three days I was home. But brothers and sisters, look, if the principal was standing at the door and caught me, what is God catching us doing as he stands at the door? What, what did he hear you say last week when he was eavesdropping at the door? And I need to remind somebody, he's not just standing at the door, but he sees our very heart. You see, James says, y'all, look, judgment is coming, and so the best thing that we can do as we prepare is make sure that we are loving one another. Now, I asked James, James, why, I mean, why did you not say all of those other sins that we do? Why would you put it on this sin about loving one another and being acceptable to each other? Why? Because love sums it all up. Love sums it all up. Jesus said, upon these two commandments hang all of the law, that you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that you love your neighbor as yourself. 
Ma ma matter of fact, he's going to say it like this in, in 1 John chapter 4 and, and, and verse 8. Uh, John reminds us like this, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Since he knew I was going to pass the Baptist vote, he repeated it in verse 16. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in him. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Oh, brothers and sisters, what James is trying to remind all of us, if we want to be ready when the Lord comes again and be prepared, not only must we work while we wait, but we must love while we live we must love while we live this is not the time for division this is not the time to be divided between the races this is not the time uh, for christians to be divided among denomination this is uh, not about democrat or republic it's not about immigrant or a citizen it's about us having a love for one another by this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the love that you have one to another. The Lord is saying we got to be peaceful with one another. Are you the mess starter? Are you the one to keep things going in the family? The Lord is saying be peaceful. Love while you live. Be patient. Work while you wait. Let me give you a third one. Be positive. Be positive. Be, be positive. Look what James says. James says, look, as the Lord is coming back, y'all, before he gets here, we might have to go through some suffering. But praise be to God, he says, that we have some examples to follow. Look what he says, verse 10 and 11, for examples of patience and suffering. My dear brothers and sisters, look uh, at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job. A man of great endurance and you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy I call this our triumph I, I call this our triumph why because what James says is in this life you're gonna have some triumphs you're gonna have some troubles and some tribulation you're gonna have sicknesses that you didn't even have to invite brothers and sisters you're gonna go through storms that you were not facing but how do we face our troubles and still be positive he said let me give you a few lessons from Job first of all Job teaches us double for your trouble double for your trouble in life yes you might have some situations that you go through but aren't you glad when you look at the life of Job at the end God gave him double for his trouble uh, he lost 3,000 God gave him 6,000 he lost all of his children God gave him all of his uh, more children to equal the number why because God knows how to give you double for your trouble I need to tell somebody eyes have not seen ears have not heard the great thing God has in store for you weeping may endure for a night but joy will come in the morning God knows how to give you double for your trouble you hang on in there because not only does Job, Job teach us God will give you double for your trouble Job teach us that sometimes you got to go through some things in order to get to some things sometimes we don't understand why the sickness why the storm why the problems and the stresses of this life but oh if I never had a problem wouldn't know God could solve them if I never had a mountain I wouldn't know that he's a mountain mover sometimes your breakthrough is on the other side of your burden sometimes success is on the other side of the storm and you can't give up and throw in the towel while you're going through it you got to get through it to get to it but then something else Job teaches us the reason why we can remain positive. I call this Job teaches us to always choose option two. Job's wife, he, he had been going through so much, uh, lost all his children, lost all his wealth, his health was bad. His wife said, curse God and die. Job said, you sound like a foolish woman. I, I can't curse the one who brought me here. I can't curse the one who have been giving me all of this good. Job said, instead, I'm going to choose option two. What's option two? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. What's option two? All the day 
ease of mind. Appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change comes. What's option two, T-W-O? I'm going to trust him, worship him, and obey him. Even when I can't understand, trust, worship, and obey. Even when doctor said it came back positive, trust, worship, and obey. Don't give up, but learn how to be positive no matter what you're going through. And so not only must I work while you wait, not only must we love while we live, y'all, we got to enjoy while we endure. We got to enjoy what we endure. Uh, you might be going through something right now. It may have taken everything in you this morning to get up and to come through the rain and to get here in church. But instead of complaining, instead of walking around with your head down, with, your, with a dejection in your spirit, you better praise the Lord. You better enjoy what time God has given you. Why? Because Job teacher, God's got a hedge all around us devil can't get to us enemy can't bring us down storms can't defeat us thank god for the hedge and so regardless of what comes my way i've come to realize this is the day that the lord has made and i will rejoice and be exceedingly glad therein enjoy why you endure we got to be positive we got to be peaceful we got to be patient let me give you the last one y'all and that is we got to be pure we got to be pure we got to be pure look what Job said verse 12 there he, 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 he said most of all my brothers and sisters never take an oath a heaven on earth or anything else just say a simple yes or no for you that you will not so that you will not sin and be condemned I call this our talk I call this our talk I call this our talk Job said what messes many of us up is our words our words don't usually match our action now I wish he, he, he hadn't thrown verse 12 in there but, but since he did I got to preach about it because some, some, some of us we're we pretty good in, in our attendance we're pretty good in coming to church. Matter of fact, we're pretty good looking like church folks. We done let the hymn out a little bit, you know. But the issue comes with our talk. We, we live in a day and time now, brothers and sisters, where uh, even the truth is just treaded upon so lightly. And, and it's, it's nothing new, y'all. We, we, we've done this always, and I believe this is why James, James says, don't, 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 don't swear. He, he said, don't swear, because he, he, he knew I was going to pastor Baptist folks, and, and, and you know how we, we, we used to do. We, we would say things like, if I'm lying, I'm dying. How many heard that? How many heard that saying growing up? No good and well, they were lying through their teeth. I'm, I'm glad Lord just didn't strike us dead. Matter, matter of fact, we would even we wouldn't even say like this stuff, uh, stuff like that. I I I I I, I, I cross my heart and hope to die. And all the time we got our fingers crossed behind our back, thinking that just because our fingers was crossed, it canceled out the lie we were saying with our lips. And yet what James says, brothers and sisters, when it comes to your words, talk straight. Talk straight. Look, all of us ought to be clear and not confusing when it comes to our words. He said, let your yes be yes, your no's be no. Brothers and sisters, talk straight. That's why we ought to avoid the sarcastic remarks. We ought to avoid even the innuendos and putting folks down. He says, talk straight. But another way that we ought to be pure in our talk, we ought to talk saved. We ought to talk saved. Uh, we ought to have wholesome conversation come out of our mouth. Some stuff you ought not just even say. Some jokes ought not come out of your mouth. Some words ought not come out of our mouth. We ought to be talking safe. Let no corrupt communication uh, proceed out of your mouth, but that which is going to edify the hearer. But then we ought to talk sincerely. You ought to mean what you're going to say. 
Why do I say that? Because Jesus said himself, Matthew chapter 12, uh, verse 36 and 37, I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. Oh, brothers and sisters, we got to work while we wait. If we want to be prepared, we got to love while we live. If we want to be prepared, we got to enjoy while we endure. But here's the fourth one. We got to walk what we talk. We got to walk what we talk. Thank you, mama. Mama reminds me, even to this very day, boy, live what you preach. Y'all, we got to practice what we preach. We got to live what we sing about. We can't do it one way on Sunday and then live another way during the week. God said, be pure. He's coming back again. And he is looking for a church without a spot or brink. Only the pure in heart shall see God. That's all I stopped by to tell you. I asked you this morning, Brown, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Are you ready? Are you ready for that day when the rapture will take place? Are you ready? If the Lord delays his coming and death meets you, maybe morning, noon, or night, are you ready even for death? Have you made up your mind? Do you know where you will spend eternity? This is not something you ought to wonder about. This is not something you ought to be scratching your head about. This is not something that your family ought to be guessing when it happened, whether or not you're truly saved. You ought to know for yourself that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that I love the Lord. Are you ready this morning? And I'm here to tell somebody that's what I love about Jesus. He came, brothers and sisters, to make things ready. He came to make things ready. Don't you realize that all of us were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We couldn't earn our way to heaven. We couldn't buy our way to heaven. We couldn't work our way to heaven there was no way that we could be reconciled to God and so God said since man can't come to me I'll come down to man and in Jesus Christ his only begotten son he came down in flesh good God all of my dad born in Bethlehem wrapped in swaddling clothes he was laid in a manger and I'm so glad Jesus came in order to get things ready healed the sick made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk because he came to get things ready one Friday morning on an old rugged cross Jesus went to Calvary and he died brothers and sisters here is what I love about his death they put nails in his hands they put a crown of thorns on his head they pierced him in his side they put nails in his feet y'all he died but he died for us it should have been our hands nailed to the cross for the stealing that we had done it should have been our feet nailed to the cross for the places we had gone it should have been our heart speared in the side for the hatred in our heart but he died for our sins he died for our wrongs he died oh didn't he die he died till the sun refused to shine he died till the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man he died until the grave shook and the came open and the dead walked the streets of Jerusalem he died until the centurion said surely this must be the son of God he died that Friday was buried in the grave but oh he didn't stay dead but early Sunday morning, he got up conquering grave, conquering death, conquering sin. He got up with all power in his hands. And I hear Jesus saying, come on, 
sing to me. Oh, you got a heavy lady. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Jesus said I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So I ask you this morning, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for his return? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Do you know where you will spend eternity? My testimony is, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. My soul is saved. My sins forgiven. Shackles have been loosed. I'm ready. My past been pardoned. My present is blessed. My future is promised. I'm ready. My joy is complete. My peace secure. My love is real. I'm ready. Because one Sunday night, I came to Jesus just like I was. Weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. Yeah, yeah. Old folks say, if you hear my home go, don't worry about me. I'm just another soldier. I'm ready. I'm like Paul. I'm in a win-win situation. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For me to live this Christ and to die is gain. Yeah, be ready for one of these old days, one of these old days, when the Lord crack the sky, I want to be caught up, I want to be caught up, I want to be caught up, to meet him in the air, so brown, stay prayed up, so you can be caught up, stay dressed up, so that you can be caught up. Stay fixed up so that you can be caught up. Live right. Love everybody. Serve the Lord. And when that day come, we can say like the songwriter. Some glad morning when this life is over. Sure. I fly away, oh, I fly away, oh, glory, I fly away, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, you know I fly away, oh, some glad morning. When this life is over, ah, if you're ready, come on, stand with me, sing with me. Oh, when a home of God's celestial shore, you know I fly away. Come on, come on. Oh, I fly away. Oh, glory, I fly away in the morning. George never ends. You know I fly away. Oh, I oh, glory. Are y'all ready? Are 
Are you ready? Oh, with time die. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you're not ready, we want to extend the invitation. If you came here with doubts in your mind of where you would spend eternity, if there's any questions in your mind of your soul's salvation, the one thing that you don't want to play with is where you will spend eternity. If you admit that you're a sinner, believe in what Jesus did on the cross. If you confess him as Lord and Savior, he'll save you right now. The invitation's extended. The invitation's extended. If you're here without a church home and you need a place to call home and the Spirit has been speaking to your heart, this is a good time to say yes. Maybe you're here today, brothers and sisters, and you know that your life has not been pleasing. It hasn't been like you know it ought to be. You need to make it right with the Lord today. We extend an invitation. Say yes today. Say yes today. Every believer need a place to call home. And if you're here, you don't have a church home, and you've been praying and looking for a place, and the Spirit has spoken to your heart that this is the place for you. Say yes today, say yes today. If you're in the risers, if you're in the balcony, don't let this moment pass you by. Here's another. I die when I die. Hallelujah. You know I fly away. Oh, there's a bright crown waiting for me. There is a bright Here's another one. Waiting for me, there is a bride. Waiting for me in that new Jerusalem. for the joy of being ready for the assurance of salvation that if we work while we can love while we live if we enjoy while we endure and even if we walk what we talk one day we'll hear you say servant well done we thank you for already fixing it up paying the great price and we look forward to your return and for that great reunion. Thank you for these. Knit their hearts with our hearts. Even as we worship you, God, and we pray that you will indeed touch our hearts even as we give back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Boy, they need some steps here. Amen. Amen.